Hey everybody, this is our first video. Today we're going to be showing you how to install a Vision Pro 8000 thermostat. I've got here is the two tools that you should need. Um, some of this may vary depending on the install, but that's all you need really is a, a Phillips screwdriver, small screwdriver for a thermostat. Um, there's nothing wrong with the thermostat that we have in place right now. This is just a, a little video, um, instructional video to help you if you decide to do it yourself with the availability of thermostats online on Amazon or in, in your local big box stores, you can, you can find them. And so we, we are seeing a lot of people putting these in and, um, they're not always done correctly. So this will help you if you decide to do it yourself. If you need someone to help you, um, or you run into a problem that you can't resolve, you can always get a hold of us at EliteComfortServices.com or 832-309-377. So here's our new thermostat. I separated it from the back from the face. If you notice here, this comes with a battery installed, a CR2032. All that's to do is to keep the programming um, in case you lose power, it comes with a set of AA batteries. We will not need those because we have the common feed. This will work if you if you ran into a situation where you didn't have a common feed to power your thermostat. You could use this one because it has the option for batteries. And so um, this is a good thermostat to keep on. This is an 8000. It actually does up to three heats and two cools heat pump or two heat and two cool conventional um, we're going to be doing a one heat, one cool conventional. So that's all you have in here. You've got the, um, the face, the back, four AA batteries, your screws and your anchors. There's an install, um, manual and a user guide. So this is the installation manual. That's all we need. See, I've already removed the cover off of our old thermostat. And so all we have left here is this plate um, that, that the face of the thermostat is going to mount to. We've got a white wire, a green wire, yellow wire, blue wire right here, and then this red, red wire. The blue wire is important. It may not be blue on your thermostat. It could be any color. B, C. It would typically be a C. You sometimes will see it identified as a B. That's the common feed. That's going to power your thermostat if you don't have batteries. So some thermostats are going to require that. Be sure that you get the proper thermostat. Okay? The next thing we're going to do is go through here, and I'm going to un undo these wires. It's very important that you turn the furnace off. The furnace off at the breaker or if it's in the attic. Sometimes there's a light switch that controls the power to it. Um... A lot of people, I, I end up at calls where someone's tried to has changed the thermostat out, but somehow they've shorted out uh, the three amp fuse in there, or, or worst case, a transformer, by not having the power shut off when they when they make the change. Now, as you see, I've pulled all of the the wires loose using a small thermostat screwdriver that'll that will fit in there. Your normal screwdriver. Um, it's not going to get in there. You're going to need a smaller one. So I've got them all loose like that. The next step, I'm going to loosen these screws here and over here and remove this face plate off and put my new one on. And that way I can go back in and wire this up. Okay, so we've got our new face mounted in place. And if you notice, one of these um, holes here goes up and down. That's so you can adjust for level. You know, if you're a little higher or a little lower on this side, you can, you can adjust that. Um, one of the things that I, I didn't mention was, for, for me, it's easier to, to go ahead and install this. You always wanna write down the color of your, your wire and then the terminal at which it connects to. Um, it's very important. Make sure you do that. They're, they're normally going to be color coded, 
most of the time, but, but every once in a while you get some kind of random um, wire stuck in there and it can, it can really cause some problems. So now the next step is just gonna be wiring the wires to their terminal on the thermostat and then um, installing the thermostat. Okay, so we've got all our wires in place. I've also checked them once I put them in to make sure that they're connected well. The last thing you want to do is, you know, six months from now, turn your AC on or vice versa, turn your heater on and it not work because you had a wire slip loose. Um, you know, always want to check that. That's very important. Now the next step, we're going to put the face on and then we're going to program the thermostat, which is as critical a, a step as any in the installation of a thermostat is making sure that it's installed properly. Okay, so we've got our thermostat in place and we're, um, we're ready for the, the, the setup process. So we're going to select residential next. We're just gonna leave it as thermostat for this one. It's not zoned. It doesn't have an equipment module. It doesn't connect to a red link. Next, to begin the installer setup, next. Thermostat type, programmable, yes. We wanna measure in Fahrenheit, yes. Outdoor air sensor, not in this application, no. So we're gonna leave that there. It's conventional forced air, correct one stage, one heating. Now this is very important here because depending on the style or type of unit you have, um, you need to know this. So on, if you have gas heat, you're gonna select equipment controls fan. If you have an electric heater, in this case we do, um, you're going to select T-stack controls fan. System changeover is manual. I like manual. Some people will prefer auto changeover. Um, cool cycles per hour three, heat cycles, compressor. You want a five minute delay. That's what they recommend. And the rest of these should be pretty, pretty standard. Minimum cool point 50. No one should want to set their AC to 50. It's not going to get there in Houston anyway. Maybe today because it's 20 degrees outside. Um, we'll leave the keypad unlocked. Wired sensor on S terminal? No. We have media filter and we have one. Next, reminder we're going to turn that on. 30 days runtime. So we have a filter that needs to be changed out at least monthly. We don't have a humidifier, thank goodness. Dehum, we don't have the ability on this thermos, on this unit to do that. Um, so we don't need to worry about that. No ventilation, no UV lights. Next, on demand backlighting, we like the 12 hour clock, daylight saving times. I don't know if we need to offset it yet. That's in case you need to adjust the temperature. Um, at this point, we don't. Your name next. So these are all for the dealers. We're not gonna put that in here right now. So we saved our changes. Let's press here for our end. So we're gonna select the date and time today is January January 15th 2018 and it is 11 so we saved our changes there and now we're running so right now our system is set to heat. Our indoor temperature is 68 degrees. Our humidity is 19%. That's very low, but that's because it's so cold. Now we're gonna bump this up a little bit. 74, 
one other thing um actually i'm gonna pull this cover off and show you guys one thing that i that i like to do on the install you see that big void there so your thermostat is sensing temperature it's very important that we seal that um, so what i'm going to do is use um, some caulking and fill that hole our, our thermostat is going to sense temperature wherever it gets it so inside this wall is an unconditioned space um, in the summer that can be connected directly to the attic and you've got hot air um, getting onto the back of this thermostat in the winter the cold air falling down there can really a, you know mess with your thermostat's temperature reading so you want to make sure that that reading is correct sealing that's going to help i'm going to do that right now and then i'll show you what it looks like this after is what i like to use um to seal those holes works very good it's fast drying doesn't have a smell to it some some of the the tubes you buy have a just an a very strong smell it can it can be offensive to some people this works well seals you don't have to use it every day and it still works fine when you get ready so i've sealed my hole there as you can see only thing left to do is put my thermostat on this particular thermostat drops in kind of at an angle here and then snaps on at the top it's on there good um we've got it set up it's in it's going to be in in delay now it's saying wait there once that goes away it should be ready to run let us know if you have any questions. Um, be sure to follow our page, like, share, um, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're going to be posting tons of videos. So this is just the first one of kind of an, an instructional video. We're going to be doing some diagnostic videos, some tips for you guys as far as before you call out a professional. You know, in some cases, you're going to need somebody. You're going to have to have someone come out and look at it. But we don't want you to have to to pay until you, you know, you need to. So we're gonna share some tips here in the future on different, uh, different troubleshooting tips that you can do as a homeowner, basic stuff, all the way up to some, you know, a little more, um, a little more difficult stuff for if you, if you choose to tackle it. Um, if you need somebody, you can always call us. Our, our phone number is 832-309-3771. You can find us online. EliteComfortAC.com, EliteComfortServices.com, uh, Facebook, Yelp, YouTube, you know, wherever you go to find somebody, you're going to find us there. Um, if you need some help, we're there for you. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.